Welcome to SNAP Tutorial 3A1, Building a Block. Go to the Variables menu, and at the bottom, find the Make a Block button. Click it. You should see this window appear. In this window, from top to bottom, there are four choices to make. First, into which of the block menus should your block go? Or, in other words, what color will it be? I'm going to make a blue motion block. Second, what's its name? My block will be called square because it's going to move the sprite around a square. Third, what shape block is it? Is it a jigsaw shaped command block? An oval reporter block? Or a hexagonal predicate block? I'm going to make a command block. And fourth, should this block be available to all sprites, or is it just for the current sprite? Most of the time you'll want for all sprites. Once you've made all four of these choices, click OK. You'll then see the block editor, which is like a little scripting area. In the block editor, you'll make one script that says what Snap should do when your block is used. At the top of the block editor is a hat block that contains a picture of the block I'm building. Hat blocks usually say, when such and such happens, do this. The hat block in the editor says, when someone uses the square block I'm writing, do this. What is it I want to do? Well, a square has four sides, so I'm going to take a repeat block and set its repetition count to 4. What do I want to repeat? I'm going to move the sprite, and I'd like to move it 100 steps, which is a medium amount. And then I'd like to turn it clockwise 90 degrees, because squares have right angles between the sides. I'm resisting the temptation to put anything else in here, such as a go-to XY block to say where to draw the square, or a pen down block, even though I'm sure I'll want the pen down when I use square. Instead, I'll keep the block definition as simple as possible and put those scene setting commands in the script that uses square. You could now click OK to define square and close the block editor. But while you're debugging, it's probably a good idea to click apply instead. That defines square but keeps the block editor open, so we can see the definition and the result of using the block at the same time. My block appears at the bottom of the motion menu. Here it is. I'm going to make a script using it that will say when green flag clicked, put the pen down and draw a square. Very simple script. Here goes. Indeed, it draws a square. But I can also use square in a more complicated script. For example, I can draw a bunch of squares and turn the sprite a little bit in between. Do you see why I picked 36 degrees? Here's the result. Or, alternatively, I can, in each repetition, put the pen down and then draw the square and then pick the pen up and then move a little before I turn. I'll move 20 steps. And now I get this picture. This is why I didn't want to make any assumptions in the square definition about where the square would be drawn. It allows me to use square multiple times in multiple positions. By the way, if you can't find the block you just created, it's probably because in the first step you forgot to say which menu to put it in. In that case, 
look at the bottom of the variables menu for a gray block in the other category, which is what you'll get by default. At this point, you should pause the video and try writing a block that draws an equilateral triangle. Don't worry if it doesn't work at first. Just figure out what the problem is and fix it. Also, remember not to worry about where the triangle is drawn or what direction it's facing. Just keep it as simple as possible. Now I'm going to make a custom reporter block. I start with the make a block button. This time I'm going to put my block in the operators menu. It's going to be called pi. It's a reporter for all sprites. When you make a reporter, the script has to say what value to report. To do that, look in the control palette for a block named report. Don't be confused. Report itself is a command block, but what it does is tell Snap what value you'd like your reporter, pi, to report. Uh, my block is very simple. It always reports the same value. So I'll click Apply. And now look in the operators palette down at the bottom. Here's my pi block. I can try it out either by just clicking the block, in which case the value it reports will be shown right next to it. Or I can take something like a say block and put my reporter in the input to say and now watch the sprite, and it tells me the value of pi. One more example. I'm going to make a predicate block, that is, one that reports a true or false value. So I'll find make a block, click on it. My block is going in the sensing menu. It's going to be called right of center, question mark. It's a convention that predicates often have question mark at the end of the name, but you don't have to follow that if you don't want to. So my block is a predicate, and it's for all sprites. How do I know if the sprite is to the right of center? Well, uh, I'm going to need, again, a report block. And it's to the right of center stage if its horizontal position, its x coordinate, is greater than zero. So let me take a greater than block from operators and an x position reporter block from motion and put a zero in here. Now I'll look in the sensing menu. Here's my right of center block. If I drag the sprite off to the right <clears throat> and click right of center, it reports true. But if I drag the sprite left of center and click the block, it reports false. As a final exercise, you can use the ask and answer blocks here in the sensing menu to write a reporter called name that finds out and reports the user's name.